Привет, друзья! Я рад приветствовать вас на канале. Капитан Герман, у нас сегодня погода немножко ветреная, поэтому может быть небольшой брак по звуку. Я думаю, что все будет хорошо, но тем не менее у нас сейчас так сильно задувает, но речь сегодня будет не об этом. Мы будем брать интервью. И как вы знаете, мы берем интервью у очень интересных людей, которые что-то в этой жизни делают экстраординарное. Итак, сегодня у нас будет интервью с Малитом. Бэкпекер, если вы не знаете, кто это, это люди, которые путешествуют с рюкзачком, то есть экстра low budget, то есть на минималочках. Он прошел пешком практически через половину мира, из Европы всю Центральную Америку, всю Южную Америку и так далее. Но путешествует он не один, а с собачкой. Мне собачки нравятся, поэтому для меня это было дополнительным бонусом. Но самое интересное, что мы же берем интервью не только у бэкпекеров, мы берем интервью у людей, которые каким-то образом связаны с яхтингом. Так вот, Малит нашел лодку в озере Центральной Америки. Нашел ее хозяина, ее купил, лодка была в очень тяжелом состоянии, он ее восстановил, нашел способ, как ее перевести, и вот сейчас он стал яхтсменом и стоит здесь с нами в Панаме. Поэтому мы будем брать интервью у яхтсмена, который путешествует на минималках, который нашел лодку, которую восстановил. В общем, об этом будет наш сегодняшний ролик. Ну что, вы готовы? Погнали! Но, друзья, перед тем, как мы начнем наш сегодняшний выпуск, я хочу напомнить вам, что мы запустили яхтенную школу, которую я готовил целый год. Реально очень крутой курс, который подходит для новичков, которые только хотят приобщиться к яхтингу, либо для тех, кто уже начал ходить, но хочет понимать глубже, потому что мы сделали курс, который не покрывает только формально необходимые пункты, а на мое усмотрение я сделал очень большой акцент на то, что я считаю реально нужно в яхтинг. А для тех, кто не до конца уверен, хороший ли это курс, Заходите на нашу страничку с курсами, выбираете демо-курс, проходите несколько уроков, подтверждаете то, что это очень крутой курс и записываетесь на наш основной, на большой курс, проходите экзамен и после этого можно приезжать на практику. Ну что, с этим все понятно, идем дальше и начинаем рассказывать о Малите и его собачке, его путешествии, его лодке. Чарли Морган 1976 года, 30 футовая. И сейчас Малит нам начнет рассказывать всю свою историю. Погнали! Hi guys, welcome to Captain German Exploring YouTube channel, and I would like to introduce you Malit. Thank you very much for inviting us to your perfect boat. Thank you for your uh, And by the way, it is a not only cool boat, it is a cool story you promised us to tell. Because we have a friend, we already made interview, and uh, they told us some, a little bit cool story. And we're like, what? It's so cool. Let's figure out what is going on. It's a long story. <laughs> it's like six years, so it's... Uh... Okay. Okay, so my name is Malit. Uh, I grew up in France. I'm originally from Sri Lanka. I moved to France when I was five years old. And uh, yeah, I grew up uh, mostly in Milos, east, uh, east side of France. And I went to study at some point in Strasbourg until But my 22 I, years old. I saw that uh, you were studying in an art university. Yeah, yeah, I did like three years, but it, it was fucked up. It's, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I did it wrong, so at some point I just quit the study. And uh, at that moment was the right moment to take a decision about... Uh, Oops. Yeah, so I decided at that moment to travel to when I was 22, so it was 2015. And uh, here I am. When I start my project, it was kind of... Uh, I wanted to travel far, long time. But I it, didn't it know exactly no where. It was no, not, no, no, no. At that moment, I was like just uh, kitting, studying. I had my backpack. I had just a little amount of money that I was making with my friend. Uh, I mean, uh, working in a, in a school. And What did you do? I, I like taking care of kids, stuff like this, uh, animation. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just a little work, you know, like to make money. 
And uh, yeah, I took my backpack and I just uh, left my house. I say goodbye to my mother. And uh, from was the... it difficult? Was uh, was difficult, but uh, yeah, I took it with a different perspective now. But uh, it was emotional. But 22 is a good uh, age. It's perfect. To, it's it's perfect. Uh, the you time you discover the world and you go. You uh, yet, yeah. like not like loans. You have to take care of a big mm. family of your own to take care mm. of. Like, but it's a quite common for European mostly uh, to have uh, just, you know, after uh, school, after college, uh, just to travel. And it is yes. a quite common. It's, see the life. It is in uh, our country, it's not really common because mm -hmm. people. Uh, normally start to travel when they already have money and job and mm. whatever but for Europeans it's a most quite common scene when they start to travel in a... uh, where did you go uh, as a backpacker well um, my project was to go first in Africa but uh, I start from my home my house my start of my trail is when I close the doors of my house and I just went to the streets uh, we start to hitchhike with another guy with another girl and uh, we all went to central of France. And from there, we started to walk with very famous in France. It's called Santiago de Compostela. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we, we did that trek from uh, Le Pion Velay like all the, the way. One? Yeah, yeah, it's a full, <gasps> full So it's one. like 3,600 kilometers walking. With oh, it is it just around? No, it's a, it's, a, it's a direction actually. From central of France, you have many different ways, but that one starts in Le Pion Velay and the end of all roads go to Santiago de Compostela with uh, kind of a holy city in uh, in Spain uh -huh. with like on the coast uh, like a north northwest point in Galicia and so yeah this is why 3600 kilometers no 1006 1006 and uh, how much time does it take I have no idea because I didn't have so much money so sometimes I, I stop at some place walk uh, wash dishes uh -huh. uh, just to have uh, some side, stop some side community money. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yes. I, I stopped in some community I, I didn't rush like uh, most of the people do I just took my time I think it took like four months to do uh, 1006 in Santiago de Compostela I stay in some communities uh, with other people learning Mamitita. construction yes <laughs> sorry no problem Papa. And yeah, after that, I uh, after Santiago, I, I went, I went <laughs> down. <laughs> I just yeah. do everything at once. So. My boat is a mess. There's stuff no, no. everywhere no, no, growing. No, 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 no. <laughs> any boat, it like this. It's fine, you know. No, it's fine. <laughs> okay, just now, perfect. So it stop bothering everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, after that, uh, Santiago Compostela, I went down all the all the uh, all the west coast of uh, Portugal. It's the only coast actually, all the way through the reef. Uh, on the reef, going south, we call uh, La Rota de Fatima and uh, La Rosa Vicentina. It's like a trek also. Uh -huh. It's beautiful because you have always uh, the sun on your side and you walk on the beach sometimes. It's amazing. And at oh, point, nice. at some moment, I found my lovely princess behind oh. you. It was a... Uh, uh, yes, yeah. It was in Portugal six years ago almost. 2015, 16. I don't know. Not biting? <laughs> 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 She's a bit grumpy sometimes, but she never oh, bites anyone. It's fine. <laughs> You're so <cool>. angry. <laughs> she's not used to have so many people on the boat. Yes, she's like, what is going on? Huh? But she's cool, she's cool. Yes, she's cool. So is I very found her cool. when she was like this, like this small, uh, like this size. <laughs> yeah. did you, where, where did you find her? Uh, it was like a little uh, a farm. Uh, there was this farm with a how you call a house of chicken, chicken house. Yeah, chicken, <laughs> yeah, chicken <laughs> house. So, <laughs> Casa del Pollo. Casa del Pollo. Sí. Una pollería. Okay. Pollería. Una <laughs> so, pollería. So, this was like. <laughs> that was this, uh, this uh, pollería, and there was like uh, 10 puppies inside, and uh, very small. They had maybe one month and a half, and uh, kept by a big uh, rooster. Like well, so I was kind of uh, <laughs> I fell off and so I went there. So you saved her? No, I didn't. I mean, <laughs> I didn't save her. She was like uh, the woman had these puppies and she just just want to throw them out. So uh -huh. at that moment I didn't want a dog, but I was just thinking about an idea of a friend to to accompany me because traveling is mostly uh, loneliness, I think. Because meet any you meet a lot of people, but you never. No, it is a temporary friend. Yeah, it's yeah. A, so. 
at that moment, I just asked innocently the woman, hey, can I take one of the puppy? And she told me like directly, take it, take it, take it, take, take it. All. Take, take all. all. So at that moment, I was like kind of blocked, you know, like, should I take it or no? How I'm fucking gonna do? I don't have any money. I adjust my backpack. I'm traveling for, I don't know where. Okay, I take the chance or, or I leave it. And I fuck the night and, and I, the morning when I saw her, like she was all the puppy, like, running everywhere, eating everything, <laughs> biting everything. And she, she, she was the only little peaceful uh, baby, you know, who was just uh, sleeping. And she was completely white and she had like two red lines and it, it made me fucked about uh, Japanese masks. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. it was so... And I, I just took her and she wasn't able to walk at that moment. So too, what I was doing... Small. Yeah, she was too small. And at that moment I was still walking, you know, 30 kilometers every day with a backpack. And... Um, I had to train her to, to walk before to force her to walk. So I just put her in my pocket and she was like stay in my pocket like this. And we, we, we travel like this for like uh, maybe two weeks until I start to make her walk a bit, bit to bit, five, kilo, five, uh, five meters, 10 meters. So you train And at your... some point she was able to walk 30 kilometers with me oh side by side. And that was so cool. That was so cool. Uh, sometimes she was but even How many go. steps for her that would be? Ah, can you imagine? She has, it... She's super strong. She don't look like, but uh, she's a she fucking a badass. a little bit like badass chilling badass. on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man, you, should, you should see her when she gets hungry. It's, uh, it's kind of uh, a show. Okay. But uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe she is resting after that your long trip. She was uh, walking a lot. She's, and she's tired now, uh, from that time. A long time. All <laughs> and everything she, we were walking all day and no she's cool for her you know she have a boat she stays she sleep she's uh, guarding the boats no fish comes too close to my boats without her permission you know? so it's so incredible you can ask her she, she just uh, she can wake up at 3 a.m to tell you that uh, a sardine goes too close goes too close <laughs> even small fishes you even small fishes also? Ah, joking, but uh, <laughs> yes, I'm joking. Mostly as well. to, uh, <laughs> small sardines. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and <laughs> so I took her with me, and we continued our travel. Uh, south, of, uh, south of Spain, Cadiz, uh, Gibraltar. Gibraltar, I passed quite a lot of time there. It was super cool to make some money because I was playing music. I had my little ukulele. I wasn't so good, but uh, yeah, people like and like the show. So you know, the guys with a backpack, with a dog sitting yes, on the backpack, <laughs> and with a ukulele, and uh, it's playing super bad, you know. But people was happy to see me, so I was happy too. <laughs> and yeah, at that point, uh, some moments, uh, I meet a leprechaun. I meet an Irish leprechaun. I don't know if you know what's a leprechaun. It's like a green uh, dwarf uh, from Ireland. It's a traditional island stuff. No. No. A leprechaun is like green, he keeps ah, a treasure. Ah, Yeah, yes, 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 no, yes. We know, we know. I, I meet a that guy. small one, yeah, yeah. I meet a small Irish man who was just walking on the street. He had this big guitar on his back. And I was playing and I had no plan at that moment. I didn't know where to go. And we just had the feeling from far away. And we start to talk and he say, hey, tomorrow I'm going to, uh, I'm going to Canaries Island. I found a boat who was bringing me from uh, Gibraltar yeah. to Canaries Island. And so, I asked him, hey, can I ask you, Captain? Yes. <clears throat> can I ask you, Captain, if I come with you? And uh, he didn't find any problem, so we, we went together, we went to the bar where the Captain was. And it was his Captain, was, uh, is, what's his name again? Oh, shit, they're gonna be angry against me. Yeah, we, uh, we sympathized. They didn't want me at the start, because I had a dog. So there was yes, like, uh, the there was, at the start, I, See, oh, nobody oh. come too close. Nobody come close, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Your ears like, you know, slowly racing. <laughs> Sailors don't like dogs. Usually boat, uh, boat owners don't like dogs because they're afraid that they're gonna eat the wood, break stuff, make dirty. So at the start, they really didn't want me to come in the boat. But I, at some point I realized it was my only chance to go from here, from Gibraltar, because if not, I would be stuck. So I argue, 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 argue. I, I, I never argue like so much. And I, I try to convince them, but even it was like, you know, bad, uh, bad to, to, to force that you much, you know? Them. And at some point, Astrid, the wife of the captain, saw the dog and say, oh, she's so cute. And I saw it was, ah, I want, you should, I want. You the dog just, you know, Take it yeah. and keep it for all the <laughs> trip. <laughs> Oh, Hold it for all the trip. When she said that, I was so fuck I get it. I, I get it. I get the boat. 
I never been in a boat before. I, I'm also very bad with water. I'm, I didn't really learn how to swim when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, but was it difficult for you because it's seasick? Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I was trapped for one week. I was like vomiting on the boat mm -hmm. everywhere. The dog so was better than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the world, seriously. So the dog was a uh, weak point for <laughs> this trip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to help as maximum as possible, but I think Otherwise three quarters of the wrong. time I was just <laughs> sleeping on the on the side and. The first thing uh, I learned from uh, on the boat was like how to make notes, you know, like the basic notes. I didn't know oh, how like to, but the something. first thing that my captain <laughs> teach me was notes. And after that, little by little, and it's when I was not vomiting, you just make a first note and do like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you just vomit on the note. Actually, and... <laughs> when you look into something. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, they uh, really didn't like dog, but after the trip, when we arrived in Canary, they were so happy with Isia that they told me, yeah, uh, finally, we thought maybe we're going to get a dog too. And, oh, and that's Isia that's was super cool. cool. Isia was like uh, amazing and they really liked her. They took a lot of photos of her. And of course, she's mm. such a sweet face. Even I have uh, her yes. photo in Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, because I, I saw her in a bar. Like, when uh, I was in Ukraine, she's like, look at this dog. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How much time did you spend in the uh, Canarian Islands? I spent a few months because I was like traveling to different islands, the trekking. Oh, where did point. you come first? In uh, which Isla. Uh, so yeah, that was the first island. At some point I was just hitchhiking all the way through. I wanted to go to, uh, to see what I can find. How did you change <laughs> islands? I cheat the ferry. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I don't have so much money, so I just pass, you know, like you pass in the buses or in France, you just go hiding in the ferry, like uh, they don't control your tickets. <laughs> I was with another guy at that moment, and we both didn't have money, so it, I was still with this Irish guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we was just uh, hiding in the ferry to try to pass. Crazy hitchhikers, <laughs> look at that! <laughs> but nice, I mean, it's such a cool uh, young story, story yeah. you know? I, I think even if they found us, they wouldn't make us too much problem because they see we are two young guys with yeah. backpack, with a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were just talking about it. Like, oh, okay, yeah. you can stay. <laughs> Keep this one. <laughs> for a few seconds. Like this oh. cat from Shrek, you know? <laughs> 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 eye power. <laughs> So at some point, yeah, I arrived to Las Palmas, the Grand Canaria, and there I spent quite a lot of time. I, I lived like uh, maybe three months in a squat, uh, like a very famous squat, uh, La Bicicleta, it's called. It's uh, like a it big is. building, five floor, mm -hmm. a lot of people from everywhere in the world who live together. Yeah, they don't pay like rent, it's like a squat, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of mix of everything, a lot of bad things also, but anyway, I keep the good memories of that place. Mm -hmm. We were making party, inviting people for food, collective food. Mm -hmm. We were making uh, like uh, downstairs diving a lot. In Canary, it's, it's amazing how mm. you can get so much, so much food for free. And Just uh, hunting? Huh? Just like uh, underwater hunting? No, no, no. Uh, downstairs diving. It's like a very kind of cultural thing in uh, in uh, not cultural, but like uh, in the street world. It's uh, it's very easy to find like uh, what supermarket leftover. Ah, they put, you okay, know, yes, 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 yes. Just, ah, we, uh -huh. we were just coming, we were like 50 people in the squad, and every night, every three days... You have the addresses and the, like, the timing, probably something, like yeah. it's the special organized already. Yeah, it's, it's, it has a uh, kind of organization. Every three days we were going to the supermarkets with four uh, trolling. Caddy, trolling, <clears throat> and we were come back with like a month of food, but like clean, super clean food, and mm -hmm. it was amazing because we can feed all the, all, the, all the building and we can feed all the people around. So this is such a best way to recycle and mm. to because it is a just on the limit sometimes <coughs> like you know next day uh, they yeah, expire yeah, it and uh, yeah. and uh, after Canaria so there in Las Palmas de Gran Canaria I found the boats to cross Atlantic it's uh, the same like a backpacker no, uh, as a backpacker I was backpacker oh. I went to the to the ports pretty good uh, way for travelers backpackers to to go uh, what we say st stop uh, boat stopping boat stopping that, uh, you go to the marina, you just talk with the captain, or you go to the nights at the bar with all the captain, you wait that yes, they are yes, drunk, yes, and yes, you talk yes. to them, hey, what's going, we go, we try to show you, you be, show you yeah. best smile, and it's... Uh, and for captains, and make it's friend, a very right? reasonable to have somebody to Crew. help you out, yeah. to... Want to see something fun? Try to get the beer. Isia, tu gardes la beer. Tu laisses personne toucher. Uh-oh. 
Okay, okay. <rire> Allez, non, stop. Easy, calme-toi. Easy, stop. Allez, c'est bon. Allez, assis-toi, ma belle, d'accord Tu t'énerves un peu trop, là. <rire> It works. <laughs> It works. It's walk with the boat also if somebody comes to my boat and if I'm not here, mm -hmm. she's keeping like crazy. We see. Mm. We see. Kim. <laughs> so we, we believe you. The, uh, we saw we believe. <laughs> It was us. She looks cute <laughs> and this is what she's... Uh, but can you imagine for her whole uh, uh, hard life, you know, because somebody wants to come to your territory and for, for yeah. her it's like crazy you know, you know how does she learn that actually it's because i had a backpack before you know backpacking yeah and sometimes i was just leaving my back on the floor and the dog was staying close of it uh. and if anybody want to come to close of my backpack touch the backpack she will just eat eat mm -hmm. them you know? so it's, <laughs> it was so cool for me because i know that even if she don't attack she can Make, make so much a noise, lot, make lot so much of noise, noise that uh, I know she's gonna just uh, wake up me or if I'm sleeping in the tent, if somebody come too close of the tent, yes. she just wake up me and it's Alarm. such a comfort, you know, I can't really sleep, yeah. uh, sleep uh, with yeah. taking good rest because sometimes I sleep in a dangerous place in the middle of the city, stuff like this and it's, it's a good advantage to have, uh, mm -hmm. to have her. Mm. Okay, and uh, you cross Atlantic? Yes, I found the catamaran. A French catamaran, uh -huh. the Michel, and uh, his, uh, his second uh, first mate. And uh, yeah, I asked them if I can go with them. And it worked, they took me, because the guys was, uh, before it was like, uh, um, it was in the military and training dogs. So he really loved dogs. Ah, and he nice. took us on the boat to cross Atlantic because of me, but because of his, yeah, mostly. So uh. it's, it's a fun story, because, you know, when I arrived in the marina, I, you would think it would be a disadvantage. I, yeah, everybody told me that actually. Everybody told me, yes, you're never gonna find a boat. Sailors don't love dogs, they hate dogs. You're never gonna find anyone. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't wait three days. I found uh, in three days. Mm -hmm. all, the other was, uh, all the others was waiting like two months, sometimes three months. This And I just found the most amazing catamaran. Like the guy's built himself for five years the catamaran. Mm -hmm. It's a completely custom catamaran. Mm -hmm. uh, it was What going 20, uh, 18 knots speed Whoa. at some point. It was crazy. Whoa, it was amazing. Yeah, I have some photos I show you later. And uh, you came to Martinique or Guadeloupe? I we arrived in Guadeloupe, Saint Francois. Uh -huh. What's yeah. the name of catamaran? Henri Calvin. Maybe no, we don't know. Because we spend a lot of time in uh, French territories. Yeah, you can in recognize French it, it's a big uh, yellow catamaran. Mm. Completely different of others. You, you're never gonna find the same. Maybe, maybe we, mm. we never saw it because we spent. We've been in the Guadeloupe and uh, in the Martinique. We spent, I don't know, yes, a, a, yes something mm. like this in total, like a okay. lot of time. So we know probably uh, almost everybody who's sailing in the Caribbean. <laughs> At least we saw it. Okay, and uh, and what had happened after? Um, After first uh, during the Atlantic, we took like 26 days. We was we was thinking to do it in 14 days, but we had some problem on the water, no wind, no water. <laughs> but at the end, we arrived in Guadeloupe, and uh, I stayed there a bit, like maybe two months. Uh -huh. And um, I found another boat from uh, Le Gosier, Le Port du Gosier, to Honduras. Ah, okay, like th that's strange way. Uh, okay. Actually, it was kind of a, it's not a private, it's a private boat, it's, but it's like a cargo on sale. I think, I'm sure you're here, but read about it's like uh, it was a German boat, Aventur, who had huge 44, uh, 44 meters long, uh -huh. and it was going to America to take coffee and rum and bring that back to Germany, only sailing. Only sail, so no more. So, motors, like an uh, uh, old style, yeah, like, style, like a so trade wind. All the boat uh, was like a pirate ship, you know, like a lot of ropes everywhere. We, to take Whoa. the main sail, we was like 10 guys pulling ropes. Whoa, it was this amazing. Is one of these yeah, things. it was super cool. Uh, 15 days I passed this on the Caribbean Sea, uh -huh. and uh, they dropped me in Honduras. Mm -hmm. oh, normally, uh, yes, yeah, it's like kind of, you know, like a scholar boat. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. Nice, <laughs> that's a cool story. Yeah. And uh, from Gandoras? Uh, from Honduras, they dropped me there. I arrived in Honduras with uh, maybe two two euros. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> this is the new story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's back in the land, you know. So there, I wasn't supposed to take another boat or anything. I just I had to take a choice if I go to the north, Guatemala, Belize, Mexico, or go south, uh, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, etc. Uh -huh. And at that moment, uh, I didn't know so. I didn't want to get blocked by the US border, so I decided to go south. 
I didn't want to make a buckle and come back, so I just decided to to travel Honduras, hitchhiking. Uh, but it's a beautiful place because it is just all that areas are amazing. It's beautiful. Honduras is beautiful. It's, uh, it's kind of. Uh, but all Central America uh, is very beautiful. Is beautiful. Like, every country, every place <coughs> is beautiful. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, I learned Spanish. I learned Spanish there actually in Honduras. Uh -huh. I didn't know so much before, but. Puedo hablar ahora. Yo hablo español un poco también. No, I, I, I don't have a, such good novel because I, I learned also, you know, Spanish I didn't learn in school, I learned like with the street people, like uh, uh -huh, mostly with uh -huh. the people. Where we stop? Uh, uh, I think uh, Honduras. Uh, Guadal Honduras. Honduras. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, in Honduras I just uh, arrived there, they dropped me and uh, I had two euros with me, so I had to... I didn't speak a word of Spanish at that moment. And it's miraculously, I think I'm a very lucky guy in my travel, you know, I, I had so much uh, moment where I was very bad and some people just come, show up and save me from that situation. But that moment was incredible because I I was just like, uh, I, uh, I came to Honduras without vaccine to my dogs. So the, the duana was keeping my dog in the thing. I didn't know how the fuck I'm going to do to take back yeah, my dog. Yeah, because you need just to pay some yeah, something yeah, I need to pay. They was like, asking me like 100 bucks for to to get back my dog you know mm -hmm. and i was so fucked up i had to do two euros i was start to making a plan to how to to get in into the duanas and steal my dog and <laughs> escape oh <my> but, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it was crazy at, at some moment i was so desperate that uh, i asked to ask my family because i didn't have any money i didn't want to lose my dog so the worst situation yeah, because I asked, it's a family. so i just went to the to the to the bank and i was waiting in the in the queue and one old woman, like uh, maybe 70 years old, 75, come at me like, uh, hey, you're not from here. And she speak, she talked to me in English. At the moment, I was, I, I knew how to speak a bit of English. Hey, um, Olga, Olga. Mm -hmm. She's like Honduran, she, she, uh, she walk in the United States and she come back to retreat in Honduras. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're not from here. Where are you from? And she started to talk to me. She saw that I was lost, you know, kind of uh, desperate or so, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just told her, yeah, I just arrived yesterday. I had some problems with my dog. I'm going to find a solution. And uh, I tell her the story about my dog and she told me, hey, OK, look, uh, I have a farm, a horse farm. And uh, you can come with me to my farm. You help me walk like a month. Mm -hmm. You take care of the horses, you clean the horse shit and uh, in change. But I, we took the dog now and she paid for the for mm -hmm. the vaccine fees, and uh, so I accept. Of course, and, uh, of course I didn't yes. To, I didn't went to the bank. I just accept, and uh, we took the dog. I was so happy. I jump on back of her truck, and we drive one hour oh, outside of her. It's a cool story. And we yeah. went to uh, to this little <laughs> farm, you know, and and it was like a horde of dogs. Like there was like uh, 60, 70 dogs. It's a big, oh, uh, it's a big you, house, you know. You get right into your heart, <laughs> into your heart, you know. It was a, <laughs> right there. It was such a warm heart, you know. She was taking uh, street dogs who oh. get abandoned in Honduras. It's like kind of a little poor country, so yeah. it's a lot of poverty. And the dogs, like, they just die in the street. So yeah. she, she was taking care of dogs. She it had like three horses. Hard, so. Yeah, and she just received me. I, I put my tent in uh, outside of a villa. Mm -hmm. I was sleeping there. I was uh, sleeping in my tent. And uh, every day I was working for her, and we become good friends. Uh, of course, of course, yes. Olga, mm. hi Olga, if you see me. <laughs> such a lovely story. Yeah, I mean, very lovely such story. Such a, you know, so, you, like the life just better having. You know, I think I'm a very lucky guy. At some point, uh, I never had such a problem. I think that was the biggest problem I had on my travel. Mm -hmm. When I almost lost my dog, but. No, no, it's so I, scary I when it is. Uh, yeah. You can you could not find a solution. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's a horrible story when you just it's so close and so far, you know. Oh. Yeah. So after that, after the month, she she asked me to stay one month more. In change, I get a little, little bit of money, so we keep walking there, taking off of horses. We are just next to the beach, so we was taking the horses on the sea, on the water, until oh, the uh -huh. legs line. And we was because there was half wild. There was there wasn't train to uh, to to be too much close uh -huh. of human. Uh -huh. So we just put them in the water until the legs, and we were jumping on the horses and <laughs> making <laughs> water. It was so so cool. <laughs> and you know why in the water? Because if you just get kicked out, you just fall in the water. Yes, you know. Yes. 
<laughs> and like every every uh, every week, we were doing this with the horses mm -hmm. to train them. So 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 good uh, memories. Mm. Mm -hmm. After, After that, that, I get some money. Uh, she let me go, and uh, I continue with checking in uh, in Honduras, San Pedro de Sula. I slept there in one night uh, in a garage, like a mechanic store. I didn't know what to, I didn't know where to sleep, so I just went to this uh, mechanics shop. I, I ask the guy, "Hey, can I uh, can I just sleep there for tonight? Because uh, San Pedro de Sula is the most dangerous city in uh, in all uh, so Latin America." So. Uh, I didn't want to sleep in the street mm -hmm. with my tent. Eh, better not to do yeah. it. So yeah. I found this place and I slept there, I make friends. I learned Spanish at that moment, because uh, in the, the two months I was with Olga, she, she, she take every day sometimes to, speak, to teach me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And what I was saying is the rest of the Spanish I learned in the street with street people. So my Spanish is kind of bad, you know, like a bit go, like gangster. <laughs> yeah, <it's just> <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I learned like this. I, I didn't have so much uh, school. Uh, it's a real lesson. one. Huh? A real knowledge. It's, it's super cool. It's super cool. That's Spanish because when you go in the streets and you talk with people, they they don't see like a, just a student of Spanish. You you speak like them, you know. A wave out of sound. You, you just it opens yeah, it's, it's so cool. Like, yeah, yeah, it's open doors. I, yeah, I meet so yeah. many street people. It's so cool. It's so. so yeah, it's good. They'll be on the camera because people have to see the true traveler. Mm. <laughs> true yeah. traveler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me, please, about your trip in the South America. Uh, okay, so uh, after Honduras, I come down all Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. I was working in Panama as a, as a, as a crew for boat for shelter. After that, I at some point, I was able to go to Cartagena, Colombia. Uh -huh. And my idea was to actually at that moment I was still wanted I still wanted to cross Pacific so I, I was kind of looking for boats maybe to cross Pacific and I was expecting maybe on the west coast of South America at some point I will find a port where there are some sailing boats and they're gonna take me for cross Pacific to Polynesia Indonesia Australia so yeah I just I just uh, start which I can enjoy uh, my life in Colombia it check all the way through Colombia Equator Peru all the west coast, um, Bolivia, Chile. I went to the southest part I, I could be. I, I went to Patagonia until uh, Perito Moreno. It's like an iceberg over there. Uh, can, not an iceberg, but like but a, it, ice. Is it uh, just uh, what's the name of it? Uh, south. Uh, Patagonia? No, uh, Ushuaia. South. Ushuaia. Ushuaia. No, I didn't want until Ushuaia because at the moment it was winter. So I was in Chile traveling with my backpack behind trucks. And I, I, I wanted to go the south as possible, but I was still in, in tents, you know, I was sleeping in tents. I had two sleeping bags. I had a small mattress. But it's really cold. Yeah, it was very cold. So the, the dog was sleeping inside the sleeping bag to keep me warm. <laughs> And we was going down, 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 the, the south as possible. And at some point, it was so cold. We were just in the tents, closing everything, sleeping with all the clothes, just to keep warm, you know? And at that time, I realized, oh, we cannot go more south. We have to go north again. We, are, we cannot go to Ishwaya. We well, would like to see the penguin. We want to, to go to like Equator. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to see uh, some ice. We saw some ice. It was beautiful, Patagonia. You know, the way also of uh, traveling in South America is di different than hitchhiking because in South America you don't travel. Hey, uh, can you take me to uh, the next city? No, you don't do that. In South America it's a different thing. I learned it when I was in Colombia. It's called, uh, they call it planchonar. Planchonar, it's a way of traveling, somehow hitchhiking, but with trucks. Okay, so you have a big trucks on the road, usually big trucks with a platform behind. And what you do, you just wait until it slows down. And jump. You run behind, you run like a crazy. So I was like this, with my dog, with my 25 kilos backpack, running behind the truck, grabbing the truck, climbing on the truck, and just stay on the top. So I was on the roof of the truck. But the problem with this is sometimes you don't know where it's going. Because you don't ask the driver. <laughs> so you don't know if he's just going to turn the around and go in complete fucking other direction. And the truck drivers usually, they they drive all night, they drive like uh, eight hours. So you cannot just jump out of the truck if it's going the wrong way. So you have to, it's kind of chance, you know, somehow. Mm -hmm. So we were doing like this in uh, almost all, uh, all, uh, all South America. 
climbing track, but it's amazing because it's amazing because you know you just on the top of a car, a truck who is moving is driving like crazy, you know, how is it driving in South America? And you just, the first time I was there, I was so scared to fall off the truck. I just, because it was like night. So the, the, the truck was supposed to drive all night and the morning arrived to the place maybe. So <laughs> maybe. I, 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 I knew that I had to sleep on the truck. So I had to put my sleeping bag and I put my sleeping bag, my bag. I attached the dog to my bag. I attached myself to the truck yes. with ropes because I was so should. afraid. I was so scared to, to just fall, you know? Of course. And uh, it was so cool, you know, driving all night, passing by the small Pueblo and just looking at all the stars and it was so, so cool. And after that, I, I love it so much that I did all the South America like this, uh, sometimes with other cars also, but this is the way, best way to so travel South America, seriously. Uh, it's amazing because the first time you're always super scared, you're always super scared to fall off the truck. But at some point after five, six, seven trucks, you just gets used so much that it's your apartment you know you just walk on the on the boat on the on the track you go to pee behind uh, <laughs> sometimes you start to talk with the diver he, he, he isn't supposed to know that you are here but sometimes they just know and they just don't care because they don't want problem you know so yeah most of uh, travel in South America have been like this so all the Peru desert of Peru Equator mountain la la Sierra la Sierra como, how you call uh, los, uh, los Andinos the mountain, I passed through all of that on the behind of the truck, so I had the best view on everything. That was so, so great. How much time did you spend in uh, I have no South idea. America? No idea. Like I a think year, I two uh, years? Two years, maybe, or three years, I don't know. Really, I can check uh, my phone no, and no, find no, the date. No, 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 it doesn't but, matter, uh, but I mean just like uh, generally, yeah. like even feeling, like two years. So yeah, at some point in South America, in, uh, in Chile, uh, it was too cold, so we decided to go back. To go back, uh, not by the west coast, but we decided to go through the through the jungle by uh, in the middle. Uh, Argentina. We travel all through Argentina, Paraguay, pra Paraguay. We try to follow the river, Paraguay River. We check on the way. That was cool. Also, just fisherman boats, small fisherman boats was carrying us, me, the dogs, the backpack, and we had done one at that time. Because in South America, I was doing something different. I wasn't playing music because it didn't work. Because a lot of people play music in the streets, and I was very bad. You know, I still had the ukulele. And uh, I, I, I found this, you, you were talking to me about marketing before, it's, it's crazy because I don't know why I found the ideas like, I have so much photo, I like to share my photos with people, I'm going to print them, I print like uh, 50 <laughs> photos, mm -hmm. my best photos, mm -hmm. and I just, sometime I just sit in a bench, I put all the photos on the floor, and I just wait. And just people just show up, they look at the photo. Sometimes they just leave, they continue the way. People from uh, every day, you know, they just come back from walking, they just go back to walking, and they just stop and look at the photo. And when they start to ask a question, you know, they don't, I don't put any price or anything, you know, it's just photos on the floor. And people stop and look at the photo, hey, where is that? And yeah, I start to telling my story, like I'm telling now, you know, uh, people, it's one moment, it's 10 minutes where I tell my story and mm -hmm. people are just so happy to know something different, you know, it's like watching a video. Mm -hmm. And uh, after they say, okay, keep it, I just sell it for one dollar. Uh, so I was, uh, they take the photos, they have a memory of me, a photo they really <laughs> like, and the, with a photo, more than the photo is the story with behind, you know, because yes, every story yes, is crazy. Yes. But you sell a story, you, you yeah. don't sell a photo. And it was so good for me, because like this, I, I can meet new people, I, can, I meet completely random people of every day, you know, they, they're doing the same thing every day, and for 10 minutes, they have a different perspective of life, you know, they understand that you can travel all around the world. They, they understand that if you can do it, maybe they can do it. Mm -hmm. It's a complete... And you're with dog, you know? And yes, with the dog. The and on the side, like you know, I was me and the dog. Heavy, you know, everything, you know? The dog, had on, uh, at that moment, I made her backpack, you know, to, to carry the food. So people was very interested to see the little dog with the guy with the backpack. And they say, hey, what are you doing? Oh, what the fuck is the dog? <laughs> and, you know, easily you, you, you make contact with people and you start to talk. And uh, it's great. I, I, I made a very good friend like this. Mm -hmm. And I meet people from everywhere, from the, from the rich men to the street guys. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's amazing how, how South America is. Because like this, you can really know, I think, a uh, country. It's not by passing through a touristical place. I didn't went to Machu Picchu because mm -hmm. it was so expensive for me. But 
a Peru, I meet so many people, and it's so so great. I think really traveling in the country is not about knowing. No, no, place. not about touristic no, it's about place. It's about talking people. With people. Yeah. It's about really knowing the people, how they live, their problem, mm -hmm. their life. The uh, it's it's amazing. It's beautiful life. How oh. mm -hmm. you know? It's so beautiful dogs. Mm. Uh, yes, you're but beautiful. Where you go to all this time? <laughs> all this time I was uh, it was still in Panama. I didn't the first time I passed in Panama, mm -hmm. I just passed through. Mm -hmm. Like I, I walked with uh, fastly on the on other boats. Mm -hmm. But after that I went to Colombia. Mm -hmm. And I went all the way back to South America, traveling South America, Chile, Pentagon, etc. Mm -hmm. After I went all the way up Paraguay, Brazil. From Brazil I crossed uh, the Amazonian River uh, with uh, some hitchhiking and uh, and, to, uh, ferry. and at some point I arrived to Leticia, Leticia, I come back to a, to Peru? No, Colombia peut-être, I don't know. Uh, I, I think it was like Peru and Colombia by, by, the, by the jungle, by pure, pure jungle. And I arrived back in Colombia and there I stayed to my friend's house, I met some friends there. Mm -hmm. And at some point I wanted to go to, back to Panama because I, I just, I, I couldn't find any boat in South America to cross the Pacific. That was my plan. That was my first objective. No, but I, from I couldn't that place, find. only So I was from kind Ecuador. of lost, you know, I was like kind of lost. I, I don't know where to go next. Mm -hmm. So I have to go somewhere. And I know maybe Panama. Panama is where canal, uh, canal, uh, Panama Canal pass. So maybe from there I can just find again, look for a boat. But I arrived at the, fi uh, at the last of my five years. When I started my travel, I wanted five years of traveling. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, it was like four years and a half, and I arrived at the end. I arrived in front of a wall, so it was kind of... Uh, what to do? You know, you know out of That's why also I was very bad, and I'm a kind of depression, and I had to question all my life. Should I go back to France? Mm -hmm. Go to work in a factory? Mm -hmm. Or should I just continue the life I, li uh, the, the, the life I love, too, mm -hmm. you know? And it is, was important, really important for me to... I, I don't know, I, it was a big moment in my life. Well, after Honduras, I traveled all South America, etc. Ah. I come back to Panama, and uh, after the COVID, I was like, um, I passed the COVID in, uh, in, uh, in the Darien Gap. I don't know if you know. Yeah, yeah, Darien. Okay, Darien Gap, there's there like a big lake, which is called the Lago Bayano. And in that lake, I was with a girl at that moment. We just, when we start to hear about the COVID, we just escaped there in the middle of the jungle on the island, we stayed there the, all the first phase of the COVID. So no From one many, around, just uh -huh. few farmers. And we take a lot of food with us, a lot of water. And we squat that little island on the lake. And there was a, all the wood house, we just restored it. And we lived there like three months. And on that lake, uh, on that lake actually was a boat. It was the only sailing boat on, on the lake. It was this boat and uh, it was like completely abandoned. It was uh, on an anchorage in some place attached to some tree. All fucked up, all the gel coats was green, the water was half on the boat, only rainwater. So it was just abandoned and it almost was abandoned died. For like four, I think it's like for four years it was abandoned, it was just like let to die. And I saw the boat at that moment, I didn't fuck to take it, but, uh, but uh, yeah. At that moment I was still with this girl after she left, after I stayed like one month alone in the jungle. And I make kind of <laughs> I make kind of a depression and I come back to France. I make a, I saw my mom again. It was super cool. She helped me a lot at that moment. And uh, I walk in Amazon. You know Amazon, that shitty uh, place where you you walk like a machine. Imagine from the jungle, a month, three months alone, oh you're going God. to the fucking city, uh, Paris, Paris, mm -hmm. and you go to work in a factory. I walk two months. I just get crazy. I just get in fights with people around me. So at that point, I just get kicked out, and uh, I had still the money mm -hmm. of the job, and I had to take a decision because you know when I come back to France after my depression, mm -hmm. my dog was still there in Panama. I let her to some farmers because oh, I couldn't yeah. take her with me. Yeah. So I was in Paris. My dog was in Panama, and I didn't know if I can come back because mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do if I come back? I will be lost. Uh, it was kind of a very weird moment in my life. It's a hard, hard time. Yeah, yeah, it was hard time. I mean, but, uh, emotionally. My dog also was very bad. The farmer was taking care of her. They, they were doing the best, but she was very sad, so she lost all her hair. She was completely naked. Because uh, oh. of stress, you know, because she used to stay all the time with me. So it was kind of hard. So at that moment, when they sent me that, sent me that photo, I had, I had uh, like uh, 3,000 bucks in my pocket. And I just booked the first flight in November. 
uh, I think the 10th of November 2020, I booked a flight to... Uh, like almost a year ago, like yeah, uh, gonna be in 10 days. I, I, I choose to go back to Panama to save my dog. I didn't want to let her die alone. Mm -hmm. It will be so bad, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just come back there and I was starting to make some plans how I'm going to do with the uh, with dog, how I can bring her back to France. Mm -hmm. I had enough money to pay her papers because there's a lot of document administration yes. shit yes, and yes, stuff yes, like yes, this. Yes. I was thinking to that, you know, at that moment. And when I arrived there, I was so happy to go back to the jungle, you know, like, fuck man, no noise, fish around, monkeys screaming. Good. Ah, such a paradise. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I was thinking, okay, let's start to make the project of making her documents to bring her back to France, take a flight, reserve a flight. And more I was thinking to France, more I was getting local, like crazy. I didn't want to come back. I didn't want to come back to Amazon. That's, I don't want to come back to this world with just like everything. I, 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 it makes me frustrated, you know? I want to be free. I want really to be free. So I had to find another solution. I don't, I'm not going to come back to France. The artist boat abandoned in the lake. I have just enough money to buy the boat. I have no idea if it's good, if the motor is working, mm -hmm. if, uh, if the boat I can... It was in the middle of the lake. I cannot go to the ocean with the lake, uh, with, the, with the boat. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I had to plan, I had to imagine how the fuck I'm going to pull the thing. <laughs> it was such a big decision for me, you know? Uh -huh. But for the dog, I, I say no. You need a home. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it. Uh, I need. I, I need uh, to make a home for my dog. I, I have to do something. I'm not gonna die here. I'm not gonna let my dog die. I'm gonna do something. I want to do something. Uh, so what we do? We call the proprietor, the owner of the boat. Before that was a, a guy, GP, uh, old teacher for me, and he told a price. We start to work on the boat. Price. The boat's two thousand bucks. Uh huh. Cheap. 2000 bucks I had like maybe uh, but cheap 3, you know cheap it is uh, relatively if you have that money it is uh, all your money you have it's not a cheap it is the money all you, you know, have what is good what, what is good when you're traveling is that if you don't have money you you used to don't have money so you you know how to do when you don't have money so I can use all my money I don't care uh, if I zero I, I I know I'm gonna find some food I know I'm gonna <laughs> play some music in the street I'm gonna sell some photos I have I, I know it's it's gonna work you know so I wasn't afraid, I used all my money, I fuck in the boat and uh, I started to clean. No electricity, just uh, a couple of farmers was living next by. Mm -hmm. I was helping them in the, in the field, in the uh, planting rice. Mm -hmm. In change, I was giving me food because mm -hmm. I, I didn't have kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, every day going to the house and mm -hmm. feed me. We get a good, good friend also. Mm -hmm. And uh, every, all the rest of the day I was fixing my boat, fixing the motor. The motor, I, I spent like, I think, I don't know, maybe uh, two weeks continuously just working on the motors, fixing, mm -hmm. fixing. I didn't know any shit about the motors. Yes, I just checked YouTube. Where did you find the spare parts? The spare parts, alternator was fucked up. The okay, alternator, you can take yeah, it yeah, from yeah. a car. It but the starter matter. was fucked up. The, uh, it's also the possible for yeah, the car. But if you yeah. don't have money, it's not possible to get spare parts. So and I was you, like first time with Yeah, I was just taking the thing out and I was fixing with glue, with epoxy, everything <laughs> like a puzzle. <laughs> but until it's work, it's work, it's work. <laughs> I was so happy. Of course. I, I put that. I just turned the keys, you know, the moment you turn the keys yes. and you just jig, 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 two weeks jig. of fucking work and boop, 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 boop. Yeah. I, we, we, we were just so crazy with the dog. The dog even was happy. I don't know if she understood, <laughs> but we just, I was so, so happy that the dog understood it and the motor was working. That's the heart of the boat, you know, so yeah. without the motor, it, it would be $2,000 just lost in a piece of fibers on the, on the, on the lake. So when oh, I fixed the motor was, whoa. So at that moment I was able to pick the motor, I can drive. So I could move the boat was like, you know, to get to the place where the boat was, it was like one hour from the first little village mm -hmm. to go to there. Mm -hmm. From there there was a little home, like farmer home, mm -hmm. was like five minutes. But all the rest is like, uh, they are nothing around, they are pure jungle. So it was very hard for me to every day make like one hour if I had to go to the village, so I was very autonomous. I tried to bet probably everything and at that moment, I was able to move the boat. I could bring it closer to the village, you know. I bring mm -hmm. it to the coast, close to the fisherman village. So much faster, like you save two, <coughs> two hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Be before, you know, 
when I was in the in the islands, uh, to get internet, I had to climb a mountain <laughs> on the top of the mountain. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Every time to get some just a bit of internet, some uh, signal, mm -hmm. I was going to the mountain. I was checking how to fix an alternator, how to mm -hmm. fix a starter. I was uh, recording everything on my phone. Uh -huh. And going back to my boat, checking at night, I didn't have light, so I was like just with my phone oh my and God. tried to fix everything. And uh, it was crazy, it was super crazy. It's such an experience, I mean, you probably know the motor more than any other person in <laughs> yeah, the yeah. world knows the motor. <laughs> what is good is when you start with nothing, is you know every screw, every screw of the boat I know. It's every part of Little Rust, I know. It's... Yeah. But from a lake, how did you take it out? Okay, so after some points, I fixed the motors. I knew that I was ready to go to the sea. Um, I had to start to planificate how I'm gonna take out the boats out of the lake. So first of all, I have to take down the mast because I cannot carry that on a truck. Uh -huh. So I went to a fucking coconut tree. I attached a rope on the coconut tree oh. uh, with, a, with a thing. I had to take it two times because the first time the coconut tree just fell on my boat. It, the mass just passed through the boat, almost make a hole on the fibers. And it was like 6 p.m. when it happened, you know, so all was fucked up. Like uh, the mass was like teeth on the boat and there was a huge fucking coconut tree on my boat, you know, so with all the leaves. So it happened like 6 p.m. It was starting to get night and I, I, I needed to I, I need to clean everything, you know, but I just want to sleep. I just uh, fuck, fuck the But you got a coconut. It's fine, at least. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, the coconut tree. I say coconut tree, but... At some point, it's better to leave it because it's like you're so tired and stressed. Yeah, and yeah like you can make it much fresh. worse. I, actually, it wasn't a coconut tree. It was like another kind of tree, but very weak. And it just fell on my boat. But uh, the morning, I just wake up with a machete, cutting everything. Ch -ch -ch. Take out of the shit of my boat. It break. Uh, I think you see a lot of holes on my boat. Is actually the the tree who fall. So the next day, I start to try again the process. I found another tree with a big bigger mm -hmm. and uh, with another stem with a ratchet. Mm -hmm. Tac 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 tac. Alone with a dog, <laughs> taking up the mast after taking down the mast. So every time I have to climb the mo the, the little uh, hill to. To ratchet, go down to my boat, adjust the mast, go back to the hill. Simple Big project. Ended, huh? like by Big yourself. project. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. I, I was very proud of myself after that because it's 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 a good uh, it's a big work to take down a mast, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we know we, we did it, but with but the proper with the cream, equipment, you know? yeah. and we know how how difficult it is. But we, without equipment, it's a nightmare. I had like a little uh, ratchet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call it, uh, yeah, yeah. I know, like a trick, trick, yeah, trick. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is like a, for a. For um, uh, trucks, you know, for yeah, a to toy, fix yeah. The stuff no. on top of the yeah, or <laughs> fix or just uh, carry yeah. something, yeah. So yeah, after I took uh, down the mast, I had the mast on my on my boat, like uh, yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. All, all the long way. Yeah, and uh, I had to start to plan to rent a truck. I had to rent a truck, and I had to rent a, tr a crane. So I was looking like for two weeks, calling everybody to know if anyone know how the price is. They was asking six thousand dollars for everything. Yeah. They was asking six thousand dollars. I couldn't find cheaper than five thousand five hundred, I think. And oh. I was looking everywhere. And at some points, I had a, a friend of a friend. I told him, "Okay, look, I give you one hundred bucks if you find me the cheapest truck, the cheapest crane, and we're gonna do it with this." Mm -hmm. And so he he called every friend he have, and in two days he found, "Okay, we have one truck." One, uh, one, uh, one crane. It's gonna cost uh, two thousand two hundred. <laughs> still a lot, huh? But it's still a lot. It's still a lot, but uh, fortunately, actually, thanks to uh, to my brother, because uh, he uh, he helped me a bit with this. He advanced me the money. Mm -hmm. I'm still paying him back, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I was, was able, able to do that, to, to, to take... So the day we had to take out the boat, I was so fucked up stressed, you know, like... Oh man, <laughs> it's a day, it's a big day, because if one thing fucked up, yes, everything it, fucked up. Yes. And I lost all the money, because there are no security, there are no guarantees, not like European, you know? Yes, like, if, do it if the fucking you, boats, yeah. If the fucking boat just fall on the side of the street in the middle of a... Uh, like in many YouTube videos, you can oh, watch to the I topic, will be yeah. dead, I will be dead, I will lose everything I have, and I will have debts and everything, you know? 
Tell me again. Uh, which place did you put it in the water, in the so big water? It happened the day we craned up the, the boat, we had the truck, we had to took it in two times because the, the truck wasn't close enough, so we dropped back ah, the boat on the floor. it's not enough, and uh, you need to put it back, come close. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, so okay. we, and uh, at some point, we had a big problem because it, we took like four hours, and the, tr the the crane wasn't able to take down, take up the boat straight. So the boat was with a key like this, ah, like this, and we had... Tom. No, oh. not swinging, but just <laughs> the fact that the keel is not... Normally you put a, a, a truck, a boat on the truck Lift, like this, yeah, straight. On the, all the weight on the keel, but that problem was like the keel was this. And, you need and to so all the weight was half on the keel, half on the on the hull. And it's Somewhere. like five tons, so, but we just put it like this, we put tires of, uh, of uh, cars under to try to, armor, to reduce the shocks. Mm -hmm. And when the boat was on the truck, with all the tires attached like hell, you know, everywhere, mm -hmm. We just uh, drive all the way, 150 kilometers, uh, I think like six or eight hours of, uh, from the middle of the jungle over there, Darian, the all middle, the way I mean, to the Panama jungle City. Road is not the highway roads where it's like... Pass to Panama City, Panama City, Colón, Colón, Puerto Bello. I was all the way, I, I was with the truck driver. Mm -hmm. I was praying, fuck, hold it, hold it. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't fall, don't, don't fall, because the boat was faking like this, you know, at any time it can just collapse. And, Ooh, I, I cry when I arrive in the in the in the last hill, you know, of uh, Puerto Lindo. Uh -huh. yes, Go to yes. Puerto Lindo on the top of the hill when I see the marina, I cry. Oh. Uh, I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I cry. I was so stressed all day and all that. Fuck, you arrived. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But why you decide not to put it in the Pacific side? I, it was a big decision also because I had the choice also to put it in uh, in Pacific, but you know the boat didn't have mast. All the boat was still kind of fucked. Uh, I wasn't ready, I'm a noob in sailing, you know, I uh -huh. need to learn a bit. And uh, I wasn't ready. I know at some point I'm going to sail Pacific, but I know it's not my time yet. So I needed to go in a place where it will be easy for me to, to, to have time to get the knowledge, uh, to get the experience, to be ready to cross Pacific. Uh -huh. So I decided finally, even if it cost me much more, to bring it to the Caribbean than to the Pacific. Well, is, yeah. Yes, they dropped me here with a tra travel lift, and with a travel lift, uh, they put me on the water. Over and, here in uh, the marina? In the marina, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I arrived here without knowing so much about uh, the marina. I, I, I had some experience with other boats here before, because I work with uh, another catamaran to making charter. I learned some buys of sailing also, and uh, we were doing like charter to San Blas, Cartagena, coming uh -huh. back. So there I get my, my base of experience. Um, with a captain who's super cool, maybe you know him, GP. Who ah, make all this guy with style. a tattoo? Yeah, he's tattoo yeah. everywhere. Ah, okay, yes, yes, him, yes, yes, he, we know. He, yeah. he was my teacher for like a few, uh, for, for a long time, actually. Uh -huh. And my captain and my teacher, and I learned a lot. It's very hard to work with him, but uh, I think it's a very good guy. And I believe uh, he teach me a lot. I know, I know about, him. Uh, I saw him speak. Do you remember who is it? Yeah, it's a captain from a uh, marina. Mm -hmm. A lot of experience of selling, uh, selling uh, boats. Like fucked up boats, mud everywhere, everything breaking. So but you I, have experience. Would you save your own boat? Yeah, that's why. That how actually I wouldn't buy the boat if I didn't have the experience with him. You know, because uh -huh. if the boat was so fucked up, I would be afraid at the start. But because I worked with him, it gave me confidence. Because I already saw boats fucked up like this, and I saw how to fix them. That's how I learned. Just I mean. confident how to do it, and you yeah, know yeah. exactly that uh, exactly. you will manage yeah, the pro yeah. problems. Okay. Uh, also, we meet a lot of people, or, or, or the sailors, stuff like this, a very like kind of pirate world. And uh, it was fun, because I was uh, blue, you know, the, the beginner on the sea. And uh, they was all making fun of me, because I'm a beginner. And uh, I don't know so much about boat, but I'm learning a lot, I'm doing everything. And yeah, they say, you never become a marinero. I told them, you know, soy marinero, yo soy pirata. <laughs> <laughs> That's my... Uh, <laughs> Я носой маринеро, сой капитан. Он поко диференте. Okay, so, yeah. and uh, uh, what is your uh, general plan for a closest future and uh, not closest future, just long terms? Well, like a um, closest future is uh, make money. Um, it's always like yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, but my closest future right now is I try to to make enough money to fix, to f termine, to finish, to fix my boat, try to 
to make it uh, good, enough, good enough to sail and uh, to have enough in the side in case of if I need it, you know. That's an uh, uh, important uh, close feature. In the middle uh, length feature, I think I'm going to go sailing to Boca del Toro, try to make it charter there, take some people, uh, make them pay 50 bucks per day, you know, uh -huh. and bring them to island, to islands and make some money like this. The longest features is try to, to have enough money to pass the canal of Panama. Uh -huh. I want to pass the canal of Panama and uh, it's not that much money, but like I'm walking, it's kind of a long term, a long, money. long term future. So <clears throat> when I will be ready, I think I have a longest features is to uh, cross Pacific uh, on single handed. Do some, some add-ons like uh, solar panel probably. Sure, like sure, sure, sure. It's, it's still need a lot of stuff, like but in a boat, it's never enough. <laughs> in, uh, I think it's pretty good right now. It's, it's enough to survive. It's, it's enough Into to. Or something. Yeah, I don't have autopilot. I, I, I have one, but I'm still fixing it, and it's like kind of electronics. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, now I'm in the phase. I have to try it to mm -hmm. see if it's work. It's not. I teach the dog how to drive, and she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna keep the wheel and. Like. <laughs> uh, it can work. It can work. It can work. <laughs> but yes, that's my longest feature. I want to cross Pacific, uh, single-handed. Okay. A single-handed on the dog. Uh, I don't want Fossili to, to be like a help. Because I think the nature of my travel is to do by myself. Somehow, if I start to make a YouTube page or if I make an Instagram page, I don't want to... to uh, people so much invest in my project because my project is to be alone somehow. No, to do it by myself. It's another thing. No, the travel I have this kind of nature and my way of traveling is to travel with a minimum. If I start to have some, let's say, easy money on the side, it, it would, I would completely do differently. If you're afraid you know, that for example, spoil you. For example, if I have no money at all, I need to eat. What I do, I, I go to the first restaurant and I, hey, can I uh, wash your plates? Uh, just give me a plate of food and I'm going to wash your plates. And, and you know, this thing I wouldn't do if I had money on the side. And that's how, because okay. you meet the people, you, you start to talk with them, you start to hear the story. And it's a completely different thing. If I had money on the side, somehow it, I, it wouldn't happen. You know, I meet so, such amazing people on my travel. Yes, but you had a story with your dog. Yep. Uh, sure. <laughs> Sometimes life can be like uh, surprise you and you can have some problems. Well, you need that money on the side. Okay, but if you have this money on the side, somehow you're gonna find, you're gonna take the easiest way to resolve that problem. You're just gonna use the money. But it's an easier way, but maybe you have other different ways that, uh, that can bring you somewhere else. And that's what I like also, you know, when you, you, you don't have so much oh, money. You are more flexible with your and decision, more free. Like, uh, more free. Uh, yeah, yes, I, mean, I, I agree. I for five years. I, 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 I had serious problems sometimes. I had very bad problem, I had a bad situation. I know in security, if I have very big trouble, big, big trouble, I will ask help. I know I, I wouldn't die just like a, like a piece of shit. I, 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 would find, I would find a solution, but I never, it never happened to me. So mm -hmm. I had problems, but I always resolved them. But uh, you I know, think it's more human approach. I feel like it's more but natural you know, way of when, traveling. When we meet people like you, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you also teach us uh, about that is a not only one way which we are going. Our it is a, uh, yeah, we, we have a, like also tunnel vision. So we just look there, but it's a more uh, more ways and it is a wider. So it, it is a cool and. Uh, guys, let's go and look Visit La Francesca. Way. Yes! <laughs> okay. You're just going down and see. Ow! Sorry. So, the cockpit, everything, the table I made, the roof is like two showers. Ah, you have a, yeah. a hard top. I made a hard top out, actually, it was a Bimini before, but it was completely destroyed, so I actually took two inside shower of a catamaran I was working on and uh, I put them together, I put some fibers and I actually it's make a good roof. I wanted something out because usually the Bimini is so, so expensive to make and, yes, yes, and this is, right. uh, I can just punch it. Before I was, I had just a piece of tr tissue on it and I was just passing a hand and it was a big hole, you know? Yeah, yeah, we so, know. <laughs> so it's so cool. Hard top. Do you know what's the brand of your boat? A uh, Charlie's Morgan. Okay, which year is it? 1090, uh, uh, no, 
67. 67. 74, maybe. Uh, 74, 74. 74. You have like 40 years. Okay, so my favorite part of the boat, the kitchen. So before it was a complete mess here. I tried to rebuild everything with stick. I, yes, I found some very cheap tick in the jungle where I was there before. Uh, some guys who are cutting tick, so I, I bo booked a lot of uh, wood stripes. And it's like a Lego, you know, you just put them together. You don't need to be so much uh, good at about woodworking to make this. And yeah, I, I tried to make a spacious uh, kitchen. I found this uh, kitchen actually, this cooking uh, stove is like made of out of trash. <laughs> oh, really? It's a lot of different parts of different ovens that I fixed together. I found it in the trash of Marina. And at the end, I found the perfect, uh, perfect shape. It's so cool because like, I, I have to fire. Well, the ovens don't work yet, but uh, soon it's gonna, gonna be able to make some bread. And yeah, since I don't have fridge. But you came with fridge with an ice. Just actually, I don't have fridge. I have a cooler, but what I'm doing with this cooler actually is uh, I put salt inside. I put big salt and I can put a lot of uh, vegetables, uh, dry things to keep them dry. You know, salt absorbs the humidity yeah, yeah, and I yeah, make yeah. a system, a little system, you know, it's simple, but it's just a pile of salt, humidity attracted by the salt and it's dropped inside the cube. So it's reduced the humidity as a maximum. And it can make me keep the, uh, the, the vegetables like two weeks more. It's super cool. Uh -huh. I'm gonna make uh, on, the roo on the hot top actually kind of place uh, a platform to dry stuff. Like uh, if I get some mushrooms, if I get some fruits that start to get bad, I just cut them and I let them dry in the, in the, in the roof, on the roof. And after I can keep them in the, in the little oh, bottles here. The ah, yeah, ah. some jars, I, I try to make some cheese. I have some dry mushrooms. Sometimes I make some garlic uh, mixed with uh, spices, oil. And you have here is uh, just a working area. Yeah? It's my office, uh, it's now my uh, I workshop. Well, before it was like a kind of bed here. So I, I rebuilt everything. I took out the bed. I built this to make me a big, uh, 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 how you say? Working area. Um, keeping stuff mostly to uh, uh, lockers, lockers, yeah, lockers. I can still open it and make another bed here. Teeth, I can take out everything and put a bed here. I can receive two, three people. Um, walking shop because it's. Uh, I make a lot of. I, I really like to make experience and constructing things. Try to fix stuff. So I had. I needed a big space and it's perfect. I really love this table. Here I try to grow some uh, some basic. Uh, Legumes, well, this is just some plants I still need to experience more. But I want to try at some point to make grow some uh, garlic, uh, just to teach to eat it with sauces, maybe tomatoes. We will see. And uh, show your... Uh, the cabin. front cabin, the front cabin you can go, it's very small, but uh, it's enough for two people. It's uh, still on, on the process working on it, but... Uh, what is in the front? Is it it's chain logger? Yeah, chain logger. Uh, and the toilet? Yeah. It's a manual toilet with a thing which is a, it has a pump. You can just put in that seat and just bring the water from it. Yeah, <coughs> that's my uh, comfort zone. The How many feet? Uh, do you have in your boat? I think it's uh, 30, 30 feet, 30.2 feet, so it's like uh, a so little bit less than 10. Yeah. What is it? It's all the work I'm doing all the time. Uh, like I try to make lists of what I have to do and I just take off the paper. There were moments some driving, some projects, some nice photos. The first boat I was, so it make me remember Izzy and me on the first uh, seasick. <laughs> 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 So uh, yeah, this is, I, I put it in a relaxed place, like uh, I can just sleep here also, no problem. That's my office I built. I built all the electricity on the boat, so I make a- It's I, like a chart table. Yeah, yeah a chart table, but all, all rebuilt. There was nothing here, there was a bed. So this is, I took it from, uh, I take it from an abandoned boat over there on oh, the, on the okay. reef. Uh -huh. So I, I, I rebuilt my boat with a lot of things I found and so a lot of things people give to me also. What is it? Is it a it's a storage, a like storage. I have uh, 400 oh. bucks of food, like a reserve of food and uh, uh -huh, so to gain a maximum a space. It is a storage under the uh, stern locker. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. And from that side, this is the same, yeah? Like a, a daily food, let's say uh, storage uh, for daily food. Uh -huh. 
Uh, I want okay. to show you this. I really uh, I love this. I put all the spices in uh, in order. That's my spices. And also you have a lot of spices here. Right? All the basic food I use. Storage for pots and storage for treasure. So I like to organize the boats a bit to be uh, to be simple and try to to uh, optimize everything, easy access, to be able to cook everything fast, to be able to put have everyone his everything his own space so I don't disorganize myself, you know. So yeah, it's uh, I really like this boat because I made it. So I made it myself and I, I, I made it in the way that I like to be. So welcome to my boat. <laughs> So it's a bit tricky way, but okay, my sailboat. So the main sail fixed together. I still I broke it recently, but I need to buy a new one or try to fix this one. Uh, it's a small sail, but I hear that boat for the crash test we did is quite a kind of uh, kind of fast and did take a very good win. Mm. Did you have any accident on just touch ground or something? No, no, never. We break the main cell, nothing else. I uh, tried okay. the second test to push uh, to push the boat as his maximum and well, the cell broke. But yeah, it's something I can fix. All that is fixed. Uh, I made this one also. It's uh, <laughs> all manual. So I, uh, all the thing was fucked up. I just rebuilt it. Uh, the tambour for the Genoa. Uh -huh. um, sure. Still a lot of work to do, but is uh, I don't have uh, right now the money to fix everything, so I just do by little by little for what I, I can do. And yeah, it's still uh, good for sailing. We try sailing. We uh, you have we it went to Isla Grande. I have anchor. Uh, this is everything I made by myself. You know, it's kind of That's technical part. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's see, PVC. See, it's uh, plexiglass. But yeah, it's working, so it's the most important, right? Yeah, 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 because uh, it is a, you have a Dynamo line, which is yeah. for and, and has it for the... Nice! A small boat, but with a big heart. Ну что, друзья, вы видите, что эта жизнь, она не ограничена той акваторией, в которой живете вы. Посмотрите на то, как живут другие люди. Я надеюсь, что этот опыт, он настолько крутой, как... Это то, чего обычно люди не видят. If I can do it, everybody can do it and just follow you, follow your life and follow the flow. Life is beautiful and it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a, a pain. Life is beautiful and shouldn't be a pain. And uh, adventures is great and everyone who love to can come in my boat at any moment. I would love to receive people and just change a bit of their life and maybe just I pass one week here with me and Maybe it's gonna give another perspective on your life and definitely. Life, definitely, life, yes. Life, life isn't a, if life isn't an adventure, is nothing. It's uh, it's very important. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to say about following the beautiful. Uh, yeah, yes, the most dog. important. Dog. <laughs> the most real important traveler. Dog. Real traveler. Ну что, на этом мы наш выпуск заканчиваем. Bye bye. Ciao ciao.